Hi there, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll review basic data types. After that, array tags will be explained. Then, I'll explain file and miscellaneous instructions. These instructions and also, shift and sequencer instructions, work with array tags. Finally, in the next video, a simple project related to warehousing will be done, by factory IO software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start. In this video, this virtual controller will be used to test instructions. First, let's have an overview of the basic data types, and how an array tag can be created. As you know, tags can be created inside the program or the controller tags table. Here, we can see all input output addresses or tags of the used module. Also, we can create tags to store and use data on the PLC memory. The simplest data type is Boolean. It uses a single bit which can be 0 or 1. So, it can be used to represent two states, like a push button is pressed or not, or a signal lamp is on or off. Another data type that can be selected for a tag, is integer. This data type consisting of a word used to store a 16-bit signed integer value, from minus 32768, to plus 32767. If a larger number needed to be stored, the double integer data type can be used. This data type uses two words, in other word 32 bits, to store a signed integer value within this range. Similarly, a tag with real data type uses 32 bits to store floating point value based on IEEE standard. Note that, there are many data types. Some of them were defined and used during this tutorial, like the counter data type. As you know, a counter instruction uses this data type, which has five parameters. Two parameters are double integer to store the preset, and the accumulator values, and five boolean parameters, to represent the counter state. As you see, the data of a counter instruction are stored under a tag name. Other examples of these data types are timer, message, and control data type, which were explained before. Now, let me show you another example. I want to use a GSV instruction to store my controller time. Naturally, I can use a SSV instruction to change it. Well, I must create a tag to store the local date time. Let's search that on the help window. As you see, this parameter needs 7 double integers to store 7 number, which are year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and microseconds. So, here, I select a tag name. Then, after its data type, I enter number 7, to create an array with 7 elements. Now, here, I refer to the first element of the created array. The GSV instruction will use the first element with this address, and also the next 6 elements, to store date and time, on the created array. Let's test the program to see its result. Well, I have to change my virtual controller mode, to program mode. Alright, as you see, 
Here is the created tag. Let me click on monitor tags to see its value. Now, I can see my controller date and time. Note that, this type of data is called array. Arrays let store a group of data of the same data type, by the same name, and to use a number or index, to identify an individual element. Now, let me define another array. When a tag is defined, by default it doesn't have any dimensions. I can click here, to change its data type, and also change its dimensions. For example, let's have an array or vector with 10 elements. I can add another dimension, to have a matrix of the same data. Well, let me define another array, with the same size. I'm going to use these arrays. So, let me remove other tags. Alright, let's open the help window and search arrays. Here, you can see the array description. And here, you can imagine how a group of data is stored inside an array, which has one, two, or three dimensions. For example, this three-dimensional array with this size, stores 24 double integer numbers. Alright, let's back to the main routine, and learn file and miscellaneous instructions. These instructions operate on arrays of data. The first instruction is FAL, File Arithmetic, and Logic. Let's see its description on the help window. This instruction performs copy, arithmetic, logic, and function operations on data stored in an array. After descriptions about each parameter, here are some examples of using the FAL instructions. For example, this instruction can copy each element of an array into the same position within another array, or, copy one value into specified positions. It can do that inversely. Also, it can do an arithmetic or logic operand, between two groups of data, and store their results on another array. Let me write and test a simple program with this instruction. First, I must create a control tag type for the inserted instruction. It has some parameters. You can see each parameter description on the help window. Then, I must determine how many elements in an array must be manipulated. The next parameter displays the current position in the array. By default, its value is 0. The mode parameter has three chooses. All, increment, and a specified number. Let me select the increment mode. I will explain other states later. Now, I must determine a tag to store the result. As you know, this address refers to the first element of the array tag 6. Instead of using a constant number like 0, let me use the position which will be incremented by the FAL instruction. I want to multiply each element of the array tag 7 by 2, and store its result on the destination address. Similarly, let me use the position, which will be determined by the FAL instruction. Alright, let me use a normally open contact to enable the inserted instruction.
Based on this program, when I activate this contact, the position will be increment 1 unit, and then this expression will be calculated and copied to this address. Let's download and test the program. Let's have a better view, to see the program and tags values together. Now, let me change stored numbers on the array tag 7. As you know, I can right click on the enable contact, and select toggle bit to change its state, or press Ctrl plus T on my keyboard. As you see, by each activation, the position will be incremented 1 unit, and an element of the array tag 7 is multiplied by 2, and the result is stored on an element of the array tag 6. Note that, after the fifth activation, the position will be start from the first element. As you see, the five first element are multiplied by 2, and their results are stored to the array tag 6. Instead of increment mode, I can enter a specified number, or select all mode to calculate all expression, and store all results at the first activation. Alright, the second instruction on the file miscellaneous instructions group is FSC, file search, and compare. It compares values in an array, element by element. It can return the array position, where the instruction found the true comparison. This instruction works like the FAL. Let's see next instructions. The copy and fill file instructions work similarly. For example, the FLL instruction fills elements of an array with the source value. The source remains unchanged. Also, I can use a constant number as the source value. Let's use the fill file instruction, to fill these elements with the number 25. Well, I must change my virtual controller mode to program mode. Let me open the controller tags table. Now, I activate the enable bit. As you see, these elements have been filled by 25. Well, file and miscellaneous instructions operate on arrays of data. Let me explain other instructions briefly. The average instruction calculates the average of a set of values. The sort instruction, sorts a set of values in one dimension of the array, into ascending order. The std instruction calculates the standard deviation of a set of values, in one dimension of the array, and stores the result in the destination address. The size instruction finds the size of a dimension of an array. The CPS instruction copy the values in the source, to the destination address. If you have learned array tags, you will be able to learn these instructions, using the help window easily. Note that, like the file miscellaneous instructions, file shift and sequencer instructions work with arrays too. File shift instructions can be used to modify the location of data within arrays. Sequencer instructions are typically used to control automatic assembly machines, that have a consistent and repeatable operation. These two groups have been explained during lessons number 9 and 10, when we were using Arslogix 500 software. In the next video, after a short review, we'll do a simple project related to warehousing, using factory IO software. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, 
and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.